A lot of people are going to find themselves on the other side of divorce when that trumpet blows. Depart from me, for I never knew you. You've been a worker of iniquity. If a person could never lose their salvation and they was always saved, why does Jesus say that to the lukewarm? If that was the case, he would never have made that statement. Depart from me, for I never knew you. He was talking to the ones saved always, folks. He was talking to the folks that believed they could never lose their salvation. And if that was the case, there would never be written in the scriptures anything about tribulational saints that have to die for their robe and their crown. If a person could never lose their salvation and they were always saved, God himself said, I will spit you out of my mouth, you lukewarm folks, right? If a person could never lose their salvation and they were always saved, Jesus would have never said in the book of Revelation, both two and three, because they both have the same narrative that Jesus is telling the church to repent. He would have never said those who didn't overcome, he would block their name out and they would not receive a garment. If you were always saved and could never lose your salvation, the parable that Jesus gave about the kingdom of heaven is like unto a father that prepared a wedding for his son. And they went out and they invited all these people. And when the king went over the guest list, he found a person there that didn't have on a wedding garment. That person was not always saved. And that person lost his salvation because what did, Je what did Jesus say the king said? Friend, how did you get in here without a garment on? And the man that was found, he was found speechless. He had nothing to say. And then the king told the servants to gather him up and bind him up and cast him out into utter darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If you were always saved and could never lose your salvation, Ezekiel 3 and 20 says that the righteous, when they go from doing righteous things and they start doing things of iniquity and transgression, their righteousness would be remembered no more if they died in them sinful acts. why the Bible says he came, to, he came into the world that he might save the world. The world might be saved by him. If you were always saved, I want you to think about that. For those of you who may be talking to them kind of folks, if you ever want to have that conversation, that conversation comes up, ask them questions the way I just put them to you. If you could never lose your salvation and you was always saved, why did God say himself in the book of Isaiah, and all through the scriptures, I'm pouring out my spirit in the last days, in the end times. Those are now times. And I am calling all to repentance. That wouldn't be the case if you was always saved and could never lose your salvation. But the biggest one that sticks out to me the most is when Jesus says, depart from me. I never knew you. How do you know somebody? If you're a husband, you know your wife because you spend time. Your wife, you spend time with your husband. Through relationship, spending time. You can't have a relationship with somebody if you don't never spend no time with them. You just know of them. You don't know them. It's a big difference. You got to spend time. And that takes work. Well, folks don't want to work because you've been lied to. You just don't get married and don't work at the marriage. The same thing we've been given in the natural is how it works in the spiritual. Husband and wife, man and woman, and they're married. They're working on their marriage every single day. If it's just one person working on the marriage, that marriage is doomed. And pretty soon, divorce is coming. Because people show you one side just to get you. And then once they got you, 
they go off and be the real them. Same way it is with our relationship with Christ. You begged and pleaded, crawled on your belly, your arms and knees, your forearms and your elbows, your elbows, and you, oh God, oh God, if you just do this one thing, <laughs> right? That's how he was in the natural when you were trying to get that woman put on that act. And the woman put on the act. Both of y'all really fools. And then when y'all get together, the real y'all show up. Because y'all was fake from the beginning. And them fake people, Jesus gonna say, depart from me. For I never knew you. And that's who he's talking to. Them once saved, always saved jokers. And them folks that believe they could never lose their salvation. People get married and think, I'm always gonna get married. Don't matter how much I cheat. Because I made a vow. It's the same backward ideology that people do in the natural, that they do in the spiritual with Christ, that they do with their own husband and wives. You think you save because you marry, but there's rules and laws involved with that marriage that you got to adhere to. When you come to Christ and you begged and pleaded and snotted and teared and, and all of that, oh God, right? You gave it up for him. Because the devil was on your behind. You was two steps from the grave. And then Jesus going to do it, right? Did all of that. You married him when you said you made him your Lord and Savior. But then you turned into a hoe. And you got with that once saved, always saved. And I can never lose. And you went back out there being a hoe. Adultery and a fornicator. But you say you're still getting in. You ain't going nowhere. You will not stand before the throne of Yah. Living unclean and unholy and living in unrighteousness and committing fornication and adultery without repentance. That word would not exist if a person could never lose their salvation. This is two plus two right here. If you were always saved, the word R-E-P-E-N-T would not exist. It would. Same way people like to throw the word alone in the scriptures and it don't belong there. It ain't even written in there. So this is what we do to make it fit our own lustful narrative. Who we think we are. You, but you're going to find out real quick. You're going to be standing before the divorce court judge like on TV. And you're going to be thrown into outer darkness. Weeping and gnashing of teeth shall be there. Deuces.